The 2013 BMW 7 is the fifth generation of the luxury sedan and limousine series. Since 1977, the 7 has been one of Beamer's flagship models. Alongside the Audi A8, the VW Phaeton, the Jaguar XJ, and the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 is one of the world's leading luxury vehicles. The 7 targets domestic and foreign consumers, for example, the wealthy new Russian drivers. BMW's Robert Kallenberg explains that Russia is the seventh biggest market in the world for the 7. A lot of people in Russia have chauffeurs. These people tend to buy the stretch versions of the BMW 7. Russia, Kallenberg points out, is gaining importance as a market, and he says that St. Petersburg, with all of its culture and beauty, makes an excellent backdrop for the car. The new 7 is a real eye-catcher and people seem to like it. Yulia Tarnovskaya says it's a big, sleek car that grabs your attention, and she likes it a lot. BMW engineers have made only minor adjustments to the 7's exterior. The turn signals have been incorporated into the side mirror. The new LED Angel Eyes Corona ring headlights synchronize with the front wheels for better safety when the car takes a corner. The signature BMW radiator grille has nine instead of the previous 12 struts. Under the hood of the 750i, you'll find a powerful eight-cylinder engine with a maximum torque of 650 newton meters. Flowing contours make the sides of the car more dynamic and the rear end is dominated by L-shaped lights connected by a strip of chrome. A second chrome strip connects the two reflectors above the twin exhausts. Robert Kallenberg explains that BMW was striving for significant improvements in fuel efficiency, performance and comfort. The interior noise has been reduced, the continuous travel comfort improved and transmission efficiency increased. In particular, BMW has made the 7 more comfortable to drive by optimizing the chassis with pneumatic shock absorbers and recalibrating the level of the rear axle. The range of engines available for the 7 Series ranges from 6 to 12 cylinders with 190 to 400 kilowatts of power. The 750i we tested goes from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.8 seconds. An electronic governor kicks in at 250 kilometers an hour. The standard 8-gear automatic transmission has lowered fuel consumption to 8.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Yulia Tarnovskaya says that although the 7 is a big car with lots of room, everything is within easy reach and is easy to read. Every one of the buttons, she says, is easy to get at. Another innovation is the 10 and a quarter inch instrument panel with black panel technology that changes colors to match driving modes. Colors can even be set individually. In the middle of the dashboard, there's a 9.2 inch onboard monitor. A dial in the central console allows the driver to adjust chassis settings or use the new navigation system. The 3D graphics are perfect. All in all, the 7's interior is spacious and practical. And for optimal sound, there's a 1200-watt Bang & Olufsen high-end surround sound system. There's also plenty of room in the rear seats. The 2013 version of the BMW 7 is already on the market. The price tag of 80,700 euros puts it beyond reach of most drivers. And the model we tested with standard equipment will even set you back 96,000 euros. BMW is planning to launch the sixth generation of its 7 Series in 2014. Test driver Sascha Knapp has come to the city of Bottrop in western Germany to visit car tuner Brabos. Brabos super tunes smarts into two high performance categories, he explains, an exclusive version and a tailor made one. The cars have the same horsepower, so Sascha is taking the more expensive one for a test, 35,000 euros compared with 26,000. 
For 35 years, Brabus has been one of Germany's premier high-performance aftermarket tuning companies. Initially, it specialized in Mercedes-Benz and Maybachs. The first smarts appeared on the market in 1998. But it took four years for Brabus to make a pimped-up version of the practical urban compact car. This year, Smart and Brabos are celebrating the 10th anniversary of their partnership with a special model. It's based on their current standard model, the Smart 4.2 Brabos with 75 kilowatts of power. The handmade black leather interior with decorative red stitching underlines the exclusive nature of this limited edition. Only 100 of these vehicles are being produced. But what's the secret of the Smart success? Annette Winkler, the head of Smart, says people are fascinated by the car because of its unique concept, the variety of colors, and the fun to be had driving it. Everyone who gets in the car, she says, feels like he or she has unlimited space. The Smart Bravo, she says, is the perfect version of the car, with a bit more performance so that drivers can accelerate more quickly. She also points out that the Smart Brabos offers buyers the chance to personalize their vehicles. It's a limited edition car that can be customized down to the tiniest detail. Brabos has super tuned around 50,000 Smarts over the past decade. The trend at the moment is toward individualized models. The head of Bravo's Bodo Buschmann insists that while the Smart is a practical car for getting around the city, that does not mean it has to be ordinary or boring. He points out that his company offers thousands of leather and paint options for customers to combine as they wish. He says that the Smart Bravo's tailor-made program offers customers a unique chance to express their individuality. The tailor-made program has been around for the past two years and has taken the art of super tuning to a new level. In Germany, a special tailor-made paint job or leather interior costs at least 3,000 euros. These are no limits on customers' imaginations. In terms of pimping performance, though, common sense sets the rules. If you super tune this car, Bodo Buschmann explains, you have to do it sensibly. The top speed can't be too fast. Bodo says Bravos could construct faster smarts, but they have to take care not to ruin the driving dynamics. And any components that are built into the car have to be in line with safety regulations. So it's safety first, even as performance is hyped up and tuners and customers are having fun. The 75 kilowatt turbo engine is capable of going from 0 to 100 in 8.9 seconds in both the coupe and convertible versions. The gearbox offers optimal driving dynamics. But what did our test driver think? Was he convinced by the Bravo Smart? Sasha says that in the short time he drove it, the Smart Brabus is a wonderful car. The interior, he says, is excellent, and boosting the power of the engine to 75 kilowatts has made this a very lively vehicle. The only thing Sasha doesn't like are the shifting pauses. The car, he says, hesitates a bit when the gears are changed. First there's nothing, then the vehicle slams into gear. But other than that, he says, this is a dream car. In 2012, Smart Brabos is expanding its tailor-made series into the U.S. and China, so people there too will have the chance to experience this little dynamo. Hyundai is expanding its Veloster range. A new equipment line called Trend has lowered the entry-level price by around 1,600 euros for the hatchback coupe. There's also a new engine option. 
the 1.6 liter 137 kilowatt turbocharged direct injection engine takes the Veloster from 0 to 100 in 8.4 seconds. Hyundai's European models are built in the Czech town of Nosovice. Husqvarna is rolling out its 2013 models. The motorcycle maker and BMW subsidiary is best known for its off-road vehicles. But with the TR650 Strata, Husqvarna hopes to take the streets. The one-cylinder BMW engine has been thoroughly modified to make the bike more sporty and dynamic. It now boasts 43 kilowatts of power. The TR650 Strata also features a standard ABS brake system. Early in the morning, almost 300 cars converge on the Volkswagen Center in the northern German city of Lübeck. It might look like a huge recall, but it's actually one of the biggest Beetle rallies in Europe. The VWs and their drivers have made their way here for the Beetle Sunshine Tour. The route takes participants through the medieval town past such famous landmarks as the Holston Gate and on for 20 kilometers to the Baltic seaport of Travemünde. It's the eighth time the Sunshine Tour has taken place and every year the convoy gets longer. Five times as many people took part in 2012 as in 2004. This summer holiday spot is popular with retirees, and a parade of beetles attracts lots of attention. When they arrive at the fairgrounds, the cars have to take up position. The idea is for the beetles to form a huge seashell on the shore. The beetle owners come from all corners of Europe, including Milan, Italy. Last year I drove through Austria and um, it was 1400 kilometers. This year I drove uh, through Switzerland and it was 1400 kilometers as well, so it's 1400 kilometers anyway. Almost all of the owners have decorated their cars to some degree. This woman says she always gives her cars names, and since this one's white, she thought Snow Queen would suit it. This year, the car has a crown with snow on it. Last year, she dressed it up as a witch with a big witch's broom on the roof. A jury judges the beetles that have been decorated to the theme, Sound of Summer. A jury member explains the three criteria. One is the time invested, two is the result, and three is the creativity of the idea itself. The jury then adds up the points to see who wins. Beetle Driver's creativity seems to know no limits. There's an American police car design, one with a guitar in back, and one with palm trees in front. Another Beetle driver says this car brings generations together, people of all ages who share one passion, each in their own way. He says that's why they're here, and everyone should try to be more eccentric than everyone else, so that they stand out even more. The top prize went to this convertible with lyrics from hit songs handwritten all over it. Better than cranking them out at top volume. In addition, participants could win a custom-made Fender Stratocaster, ideally combined with a new special edition Beetle Fender. One of the organizers says they started out with 66 Beetles, which are relatively scarce in northern Germany, and the number grew from there. 
Beatles. Now the rally is an institution among Beatle drivers, perhaps biggest private event of its kind in the entire world. One highlight of the festivities is a concert by the band Luxus Lamb, who play their hit Tausend Kilometer bis zum Meer, or A Thousand Kilometers to the Sea. The lead singer says the song expresses the same feeling as the Sunshine Tour, the feeling of freedom when you jump into a beetle and just follow your nose, maybe to the sea. She says that's what the song is all about. The Opel Safira found an excellent marriage of form and function when it was introduced 12 years ago. The vehicle offers lots of space, despite having seven seats. Initially, utility and flexibility set the tone. But the latest Safira emphasizes design more than ever. The Safira, Jörg Schluckermann says, remains Opel's trendsetter and proves how innovative Opel is, at least that was the case with the previous two models. But Opel's new emphasis on lifestyle is also evident. Now, what he wants to check out is how practical the new model is. The new Safira is aiming to go up market. There's a bit more of everything. It's longer and has more space, more options and more design. The new Safira Tourer puts all that together in an easy-to-use, flexible package. With a third row of seats folded away, the cargo area has a volume of some 710 liters. That's similar to more expensive vans like the VW Charan and Ford Galaxy. The Opel's motor, however, is a bit of a disappointment. On paper, the four-cylinder turbo diesel's 121 kilowatts and 300 newton meters of torque look impressive, as are the 208 kilometers per hour top speed and 9.8 second sprint to 100 kilometers an hour. But the van doesn't feel fast when you're behind the wheel, and sporty is not the word to describe the standard suspension. On the other hand, are these the things drivers want in a minivan? Our test driver has some more details. The new Safira, says Jörg, hugs the road well. It drives well, and for the most part, it feels good. There's a bit too much plastic for Jörg's taste, and he says that all-round visibility was never the Safira's strength. He says he sees the point about the engine and suspension, but he doesn't think those are a problem in everyday use. Jörg says that the Safira's excellent utility is the main thing, and he points out that the car in general is well packaged. The Opel Safira has more than 30 storage surfaces, shelves and pockets, exemplary, and the electronic assistance systems are unique in this class of car. The range of options is huge be it a radar-assisted distant control system with an emergency braking feature or advanced traffic lane and blind spot assistance. The new Safira features options previously reserved for much more expensive luxury cars. Those extras do drive costs up, however. The vehicle we tested has a base price of 29,705 euros. With all the options, the cost is more than 40,000 euros. On the other hand, the Safira is very fuel efficient. Thanks to the standard start-stop system and its aerodynamic form, the car used just 5.2 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. One great feature initially introduced for the Opel Astra Compact is the panorama roof. The color combination and upholstery design is a matter of individual taste. But the seats, as usual with Opel, are excellent. Jörg is impressed. Despite a few minor motor and suspension issues, he says, the Safira is proof that an active lifestyle and good utility can be combined. Opel has managed to put together a vehicle that's both stylish and versatile. Owners who choose the Safira Tour will get a good-looking car that has more to offer than everyday drivers will demand of it.
every make of car has a story to tell. A story of triumphs and innovations, of good years and bad years. Bentley's story is an epic one. Test driver Christoph Bauer says there are times when his heart opens up, and this is one of them, driving a Bentley three and a half liter over Alpine passes. It's more like a holiday than a job. The Bentley name was once synonymous with sensational race cars. Then in 1931, the company went bust and Rolls-Royce bought it out. The first model produced under Rolls was the Bentley three and a half liter. When Christoph found out he'd be test driving a Bentley, he imagined something like a rumbling truck. He figured he'd be in for an exhausting day. But after only a few minutes, he got used to it. And then he found this Bentley three and a half liter quite easy to drive. Its high precision gearbox and 110 horsepower engine make it fun to drive on these mountain roads. The Bentley 3.5 liter was designed as a sporty alternative to the Rolls-Royce 2025 and debuted in autumn 1933. This open sports model from Wolfsburg Zeithaus got its body from the London coach builder Van den Plas. A very plain and simple interior made the chauffeur's job easier. So easy and downright fun that many an owner didn't want to leave the driving to someone else. The low center of gravity and flexible straight six engine immediately won over a lot of hearts. As Christoph explains, this Bentley three and a half liter was advertised as the silent sports car. It really is relatively quiet. But if you don't like things peaceful, all you have to do is raise this lever and a couple of flaps open and you can really let it rip. The Street 6 engine no longer boasted the four-valve technology of earlier Bentley designs, but it still put out an impressive 110 horsepower at 3,800 RPMs. The only thing Christoph criticizes is the gear shift lever's position, right next to the driver's knee. On the other hand, the upper gears are all synchronized. Christoph quotes Ettore Bugatti, who once said that Mr. Bentley made the fastest trucks in the world. When Bentley became part of Rolls-Royce, however, that changed. And the Bentley 3.5 liter was the first car to reflect that change. A review from back then described the car's handling as almost ladylike. And anyone who'd ever sat behind the wheel of a Bentley blower would have immediately noticed the difference. From 1929 to 1932, Bentley blowers equipped with superchargers were super fast, but they were only good for a lap or two. Bentley brought home five victories in Le Mans, the world's toughest endurance race between 1924 and 1930 without the superchargers. Christoph is thoroughly taken with the elegance of the vintage Bentley. He finds lots of Rolls-Royce in the 3.5 liter, the chassis, for example, which was based on a Rolls-Royce prototype, and the 3.7 liter engine from the Rolls-Royce 2025. He knows a lot of work was put into tuning it up to 110 horsepower, but that was to do justice to Bentley's sporting image. Some purists might say this Bentley was actually more of a Rolls-Royce, but Christoph doesn't care. He likes it the way it is, with these impressive headlights too. With Rolls-Royce, Bentley shed more and more of its truck-like image. By the mid-1930s, the Rolls-Royce plant in Derby had turned out 1,177 silent sports cars at a list price of 1,380 pounds sterling, a tidy sum in those days. Christoph may not be all that passionate about pre-war models, but he's fallen in love with this Bentley 3.5 liter. He says it's a very laid-back set of wheels that held its own in terms of comfort, operation and stability well into the 1950s. So it's definitely earned its place as a milestone in automotive history. In 1998, the Elite Bentley brand was acquired by the people's car maker VW. History has its ironic turnabouts. <laughs>